The Power Factor Show with Rick, Steve, and Caleb. Episode 44, Part 1. Gun Rights Radio Network has the best pro-Second Amendment, pro-gun rights podcast available on the net. The podcasts are absolutely free when subscribing using iTunes or Zoom Marketplace. Or if you want, you can just listen from the website. Make sure you visit gunrightsradio.com to subscribe. Podcasting freedom, one episode at a time. Brought to you by Safari Land. Hi, welcome to Power Factor. I'm Rick. That was over the top. I'm Steve. Um, <laughs> this is an episode about sites and sighting. Uh, we've addressed sites and sighting on a couple of episodes. Uh, sites, uh, I think we covered it in half a dozen Jesus episodes, least, probably. Yeah. I think mostly in the uh, production gun episode because there's not a whole lot you can do other than change the sights on them. Uh, but anyway, so we've got a lot of questions about uh, the physical sights themselves that are mounted on the gun and then also different uh, methods of sighting, right. whether you're uh, talking about close targets, distant targets, shooting at speed, shooting for precision. So we're going to kind of run through different popular sighting options on the market and then talk a little bit about uh, how we uh, use the sights under different shooting circumstances. Yeah, we've, uh, Rick's made a good point is that we've, um, you know, we've talked about sights over many, many different episodes, but we never actually had a sight episode. And we, you know, we get an email from somebody saying, well, you mentioned in episode number 41 about the episode on sites. Which one was that? So you go back and look, and it was like, well, it was 2, 4, 8, 10, 12, 18, 21, 27, 35, yeah. and, and 38. Um, go find them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So we just decided, you know, it might be a good idea to do just a whole entire episode, just standalone episodes on sites, and also, um, you know, how we end up using the sites. Um, so do you want to talk about how we use them, or do you want to talk about... I think we should uh, just talk about the site, the physical site, okay. the part that's attached to the gun. Right, right. And uh, basically, it, we're going to skip USPSA open division for now. I think we're not. We're going to address iron sights. And both, uh, I know all the divisions USPSA dictate that you use a traditional post and notch style right, sight. Right. Now, is that the case outside of open? In USPSA. Yeah, it just says, I mean, for, for production and single stack and basically everything, it just it says a, a, a traditional post and notch. You can't use a rear ghost ring or... No, I don't think you could. I mean, it would be post and notch and the a notch ghost couldn't ring. be closed at the top. Yeah, okay. obviously not. So, but, but it is interesting that what is the interpretation of a post and a notch? Um, somebody had sent us a question before about this kind of weird triangular sight and you, we talked about this before on camera but yeah. when you put this what you put the rear sight and the front sight together it looked like a triangle right. the rear sight was kind of like you know that part and the front part was this and when you put it together it looked like that so the, the question is, sight, is, is is i mean the you know the rear sight's like this and that's yeah. a notch and the front right. thing being like this is a post yeah but um yeah yeah so at any rate but the traditional sights that we're used to and which you find on the vast majority of handguns are a square edged post at the front and a square shaped notch at the rear and somewhat unfortunately i would say the dimensions of the rear notch and the front sight are about the same, same. yeah and uh, we can get into that into the pros and cons of that but this pretty much from what i've seen the industry standard is a front side about an eighth of an inch wide and then a rear notch about an eighth of an inch wide. so here here's an example you and when you and caleb did your fine episode on 1911s which i actually really enjoyed that was a great episode um, but you were pointing out the, I think it would be like effectively the Series 70 sites or the GI sites, which are literally small bumps on the slide and almost impossible to use. This is my uh, Colt 1911. Um, actually, it's technically a 1991. Um, but at any rate, they improved the sites to a certain degree. They're a little bit bigger uh, and easier to see on these models than on the original Series 70s. But let's take a quick measurement here. You were talking about basically the width of the rear notch and the, and the width of the front post. So the front post in this thing measures 127. Yep. No surprise there. Let me guess the rear notch is probably 125, 122, Ooh. 2023. Yeah. So in this case here, pretty much the front sight is the same width as the rear notch. Um, 
I would say that in terms of highly accurate bullseye slow type shooting, that does work fairly well. If you've got a long time to sight the gun and stand there and make sure that it's perfectly dialed in, right. a front sight that is roughly the same size as the rear notch does give you a fairly accurate sight picture because you're not, you know, if you move the front sight, now your eye is really up to figuring out whether it's centered. And your eye actually can do a fairly good job of figuring if it's centered. But the closer that front sight is to filling up the whole entire light gap, whatever you want to call it, in the rear, I think gives you a more finite sight picture. Unfortunately, it's extremely slow when it comes to um, competition shooting. You also notice on this is that this is your typical stock Colt sights. It's got a white front dot. Um, I have removed the dots from the rear sight just because I absolutely hate them. Um, <laughs> Be more passionate about that, no. Yeah. But at any rate, we're so, trying to bring more passion to the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I really do not like anything at all happening on the rear sight of any of my guns. So, and that's well, one of the weird things is I would say if you were going to, we everybody mentioned put dots on in, <laughs> industry standard <laughs> yes. pistol sights. Not only are like a one eighth front and a one eighth rear, but they festoon front and rear with white dots. Dots or white some squares. Or, yeah, yeah. The squares. High Power has little white rectangles on the rear sight and the front sight. Um, and again, like Steve, I blacked out the back because uh, I'm used to having something on the front sight. I've been using fiber optics for enough years now that I'm accustomed to having something drawing my attention to the front sight, but I just like a plain black uh, featureless rear. Right, right. Um, so speaking of, of that, my next gun to talk about here is my Glock 19. Um, you mentioned the fiber optic fr uh, sights. I ended up putting a fiber optic front sight on my Glock 19 because my competition guns carry fiber optic front sights. And I'm thinking from the standpoint of what my eye is used to seeing, I wanted to have the same thing on the front sight that, my, you know, that I'm normally used to seeing in competition. The other change, and this is actually a Dawson fiber optic front sight. I think a Glock sight usually measures 140 or 145, give or take. This one measures 127. So I have a 127 uh, width front sight, smaller than normal. The rear sight um, I replaced from a standard Glock rear sight, which has the white kind of football post thing or whatever that they call that. White uh, outline. White outline or football post. Or a football post. Goal post, post yeah, yeah. Goal post, yeah. Um, but at any rate, this uses what's called a wide uh, rear notch sight. This is made by Ameriglow. It's a standard flat black serrated rear sight. I actually really like this rear sight. Um, this gun really serves primary duty as, as defensive purposes as my carry gun, but I have used it in competition uh, from time to time. The rear notch in this thing measures 180. So I have a 180 rear notch and a 125 front post. Um, keep those numbers in memory here or in mind in a little bit because we're going to talk about the ratio of the rear notch to the front sight post width here in a bit, what that means and what it kind of kind of shows you. But the one thing I really like about this combination is that it yields a lot of what's called light bars around the front sight. So when I sight the gun, I can see a lot of light left and right of the front sight, um, which allows you, in my opinion, to be a lot faster onto the uh, targets. It may not be as accurate as, like we were talking before, about the sites where the front pop, front post and rear notch are the same. But it's pretty darn fast, and like we were saying, is that your eye is pretty good at, at zeroing or centering things. I and mean, that's, you know, the AR-15 sight, that's its mechanism for working, is you have a round circular, you know, rear sight and a post, and your eye will figure out where to put that notch in that circle dot in the back, and it works pretty good. Yeah, when I was a kid, I put a... Um what we now generally refer to as a ghost ring, but at that time was just called a peep sight, on my 22 bolt action rifle. And I just could not understand the concept of what looked like this giant hole that I'm looking through at this teeny little post out at the end of the barrel. And I couldn't figure out how I was supposed to center it. This, yeah. And, and your, your brain actually does, I mean, when you think about it, it's possible to take a sight like that and shoot a one-inch group at 100 yards with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, your eye is capable of discerning tiny little fractions of variations in what it sees. I was reading something about, if you, you know, like you hold up a drill bit 
and then hold up another one that's like a, a thousandth of an inch bigger or your smaller. Eye can figure out which and one. some some people can tell, oh yeah, that one's bigger, that one's smaller. And your eye is incredibly sensitive to variations in width and height and whatnot. And so uh, trying to center that post in the rear notch um, and doing it repeatably and quickly is what we're primarily focusing on. And so now we've mentioned um, the white dot front sight, mm -hmm. uh, the white dot rear sight that we've taken the dots off of. Now the fiber optic front sight, what's the point of the dots? What, I mean, you've already got a front sight and a rear sight. Why clutter them up with dots? Dots on? Any of them, any dots, front, rear, what's the point? Well, I mean, why, why not just have uh, three white dots? I mean, and why have a post and a notch and then also have dots? Uh, well, I would, don't know why you would have any dots on a rear. I mean, I haven't seen the situation where you have a post and a, you're saying a notch and dots. Oh, I'm sorry. I see what you're saying there. Yeah. That, I mean, why, what, what, I mean I, it's like I you're adding no, a, you're adding an alternate yes. sighting method to an established sighting yeah, method. Yeah, I, I have no clue why they stick, to be honest, dots on rear sights. Um, I, I don't know if there's this idea that you're going to line the dots up because that's not the way you sight a gun anyway. Well, and oftentimes the dots don't line up. They don't, yeah, yeah but unfortunately, and then people try to line them up, and they can't figure out why their gun's shooting higher. I mean, I've seen people ask, be. "Do I line up the sights yeah, yeah, or do yeah, I line yeah, up the, the dots?" dots yeah, you know, and yeah. then oftentimes the front dot is the same size, but because it's so far away, right, it's now not the same size, and so you're again now trying to align. You've got like five different reference points now that you're trying to all come together to hit a single point. It just seems like that that busyness is one of the things and, that and I don't like about ex it. That was just to say the exact same thing, is that the busyness of having dots on a rear sight um, just is distracting to me that you don't want that there. Now, I know that, let's say in talk of, talking in terms of night sights, sometimes they'll put a different colored dots in the rear compared to the front, so the idea is, is you can figure out uh, which, let's see, which one, we may have an example of that here. Well, this actually has night sights here but the dots in the rear are the same color as the dots in the front. But the idea is that you can then figure out, you know, which dot is the one that's yeah, in front. Yeah, the yellow the, ones yeah, in front and, and the two green, green ones are in the back. back. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, I'm not a fan of night sights, about as much as I'm not a fan of dots in the rear of the sight as it is. The thing with night sights is that, you know, if you can't see your target, um, you know, you probably shouldn't be shooting at it. If, you know, if the only thing you're seeing is your sights and you can't see your target, what are you shooting at? So for that reason, I'm not really a fan of, um, of night sights or anything like that. But again, here, if this was my gun, I would not have fiber optics uh, elements um, or anything going on in the rear sight of my gun, uh, even if this was a defensive gun. So that's just personal preference. So now, uh, since most of the guns here do have some kind of attention-grabbing device on the front, what is the advantage of having it on the front? in the absence of it having it at the rear. Well, I just noticed something on this one here. This is actually a little bit unique in that it has a single dot on the rear. That's the Heine straight it's eight. Straight eight, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the um, idea being that you've got a dot below the rear notch and a dot on the front So side. it's basically stack them up. So you align the dots up like right. that. And what number does that make? An eight. An eight. Yeah, just like so that. So that, I think, I think that's a little, uh, if you don't have your front side in alignment, you won't be able to see it because it'll be hidden behind some part of the rear sight. And right. then once you get it in alignment, you get that eight lined up. And I, th I think it's intuitively uh, a, a pretty good idea to have it set up that way, although I've also seen it, what they call a bar dot, where you have a single uh, like hyphen bar under the rear notch and then a, a dot on the top. So you've got the bar underneath the dot. Which gets into, like I was saying, the goalpost version before, like with the Glock, where they had the bar and the post up the side. Yeah, but. and and I don't know that I would want to spend the money on any one of them until I'd tried all of them. You know, that's the yeah. other thing, too. Night sights are pretty expensive, and there's a bunch of different ones available. Um, and that we're kind of getting away from uh, the competition side of things. But you will see night sights, uh, you know, some IDPA matches will have, uh, I've shot a couple where at a range it has a dark house and you have to shoot in, in darkness with a flashlight. And if you have identified your target, night sights do make shooting pretty easy. But again, if, if, you know, if it's not a free fire zone where you can shoot at anything that moves, um, I, I don't think night sights are all that helpful because you still need a white light to identify the target. You know, something you mentioned about that we're talking about competition sights. Um, I am not a fan of the excess big dot sight, uh, and the excess big dot sights are not something you're going to see on, on anybody's competition-oriented gun or something that's strictly used for You see them sometimes in IDPA. You'll, but typically, again, with IDPA, is that a lot of the guns that are being used are for self-defensive purposes. 
There's, but yeah, but they are not my choice for putting on a gun that you would use for competition. Now, one of the claims they make in the Excess Big Dot sites is that they're really fast. Well, the thing is, is that in competition, people are trying to go as fast as they possibly can. If they were really that much faster, people would be using them, but they don't, and they don't for a reason. I mean, yeah. is well, but I think it's also fast within the context of. Um, if you if you consider self defense shooting to generally be fast but at very close range, right? If you have sort of a coarse sight, in that it's not finely uh, adjustable, mm. uh, in the sense that you can't finely tune the sight picture or the sight alignment, that's not really all that important at close range. So if you're shooting at you know an IDPA target at 15 feet, mm -hmm. you can hit it without any sights. Exactly. You know, and but then if you're trying to take a 25 yard shot. The big dot isn't helping you out much because it's, exactly. in, it's imprecise. So, in other words, the sights are basically useless in both. Because I mean, up close, you don't need them. You don't need distance, the sights. Don't at distance, yeah. you need them, but they're too big. That well, okay. So, yeah. so, so there is video of like James Yeager hitting a popper at 100 yards or whatever. Okay, fine. If you take enough time and do that, you probably could do that with anything. The point being is that the big dot on there or whatever does not hinder accuracy. However, um, you know, try to make a headshot at say 30 yards with an excess big dot sight, and you're only going to be able to hit this thing, you know, which isn't as big as the sight. Yeah, the which sight's going to swamp the whole. I mean, you won't yeah. see the target behind it because the sight's going to be much bigger than the target itself. Yeah. So I, I think that's one of the other reasons why I dislike most modern factory sights is the, they're too the, big. They're just too big. Yeah, uh, the, the sight. If you think in the context of uh, aim small, miss small. Uh, your target zone can actually be smaller than the width of the site. Right. And I think it makes it hard to to focus in on a certain point on the site, mm. on the target, when the front site covers the whole a large target. part of the target. Yeah. 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 I mean, I remember I was reading something about how on your typical uh, pistol site, if in, in the context of anti-personnel use, if, the, if your target is, a, is apparently as wide as the front site, it's probably in range. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, in combat, that might be a good idea. Um, but I don't have to worry about that because in IDPA and IPSC, I know exactly how big the target right. is and I know exactly how far away it is. You're not in combat. It, it, exactly. <laughs> You're not in combat. Yeah. So I like the narrow sight um, with, as we discussed earlier, light bars. And even then, you get into, as Steve mentioned, a ratio. How wide do you want your front sight? <clears throat> how wide do you want your rear notch to create these light bars? And how important is the width of those bars? Okay, so since you uh, discussed that in terms of narrow front sights, um, this is my STI competition gun. You've seen this numerous times, numerous times before. But I have a Dawson uh, fiber optic front sight on it, and then it comes with what's effectively a Bomar clone or Bomar knockoff rear sight. Um, the standard notch width on a Bomar rear sight is 0.110. Okay. Um, this front sight on here uh, is a 0 .090 front sight. I have modified the rear notch. I've done two different things to it. I've increased the width and I've increased the depth. So the width has been increased to 0 .112. And the depth has been de de or well, decreased, increased, whatever. I've taken the depth. It's deeper. Deeper, thank you. That's a good way to describe it. I've taken it down to completely flat with the adjustable part of the, the blade or the sight itself. And the reason for that is that as I sight the gun, I can see the entire front sight in the rear notch. So I'm not looking at a situation, because you'll see this on a lot, of, a lot of guns, is that as you look through the notch, the notch will be high that you'll see maybe only three quarters of whatever the front sight. So in it this looks case like a box rather than a post. Yeah, exactly. So what I've done here is I've increased the depth so when I look through the gun I can see all of the front sight and that allows me to pick the front sight up even faster. Um, you don't want to go so low that you start actually seeing the slide underneath the, the front sight. And in this case here the depth that I have it at allows me to see the very bottom of the front sight. So we can measure this real quick here but basically that front sight is going to be if we turn it on, <clears throat> should be 0 0.090, 0 0.091, and my rear notch should be, I'm going to do this here, should be about 0.11, yeah, 122. Hmm. Now, one of the things that uh, I've found uh, that, we were, that we've just been discussing here about the depth of the notch is something that is not really given much 
uh, importance. You read a lot about how wide the front mm-hmm. side, how wide the rear notch is, but I found the depth, depth of the is, rear notch yes. is really important because it yes. opens up more of the target area. Yep. Um, if you think about a wide front sight and a wide rear sight, you're actually looking at the target literally over the sights because the sights themselves are completely obscuring the target. Mm-hmm. Now, if you narrow that front sight down and create these light bars on either side and then deepen the notch, which gives you a more depth of field, <laughs> literally and figuratively, you're not obscuring your target or the surrounding area with the sights themselves. And I think that's more important than people give it credit for. I, I mean, I, I really like the Heine rear sight because the notch is deeper than on most sites you see. I haven't that's had to make right. any modifications to it, and I can see the entire... I have a similar Dawson sight on uh, my guns, and I can see the whole front sight with an unmodified rear. And there's no penalty for going deeper. I mean, if you start messing with the height of the front sight and the height of the rear sight, you can adversely affect your point of impact. Right. But you can deepen the notch as much as you want until you have get to the bottom of the front sight. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, the deeper that notch is and the more of the front sight you see, the better the it better. is. Yeah, it makes a much, much faster um, front sight acquisition, and I think it also makes, makes much more accurate shooting. Um, yeah. I've also seen people modify the rear end instead of a straight-sided notch. They'll turn it into kind of a triangle. I don't like that. And I don't like it either, yeah. but it further opens up that view kind of around the target where the sights aren't obscuring as much of the target area. Yeah, and what I've done on this first sight here is I've made sure that the corners of this notch are perfectly 90 degrees square. There's nothing I hate worse than kind of like soft, rounded corners in the bottom of the and notch. And your eye can And, and it's weird because it you're not looking at the rear sight, or you shouldn't be looking at the rear sight, but your eye picks it up, and if you don't have those corners perfectly sharp and you're coming up and you're looking at the front sight, your eye just sees something going, that's just, you know, something does not look perfect We're right here. It just does not look good. So I want to make sure that the, that rear notch is not only deep but also square. So speaking about ratios, the ratio that we usually talk about here is the ratio of the width of the rear notch relative to the front notch. So my rear notch is a 122. My front is a .090 or 90. Divide 122 by 90, and I end up with about 135 or so, give or take. Um, I like... My ratios, and this is again for a five-inch gun, uh, I like the ratio to be somewhere between 130 and 140. So this one's probably dialed in at 135. That combination, at least to me, seems to give me a good amount of light, or what we call light bars, on either side of the front sight. Now, another way to look at this is that if I took the gun and, while sighting it, push the front sight all the way over, let's say, the, the right-hand edge against the right-hand edge of the rear sight, I will see basically the right edge of the, sorry, left-hand edge against the left-hand edge of the, of the sight notch here. I will see the right-hand edge right in the middle of the sight and effectively another sight's width of light to the right of that. So when I, I center it, I see roughly a quarter, I'm sorry, so half So each width. light bar is half as wide half as, as, wide as the front sight. Yeah, so that's... Basically, what we're looking for there. Yeah. But and so, I, and so 135 it, ends up being around. That's that proportion. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now, on my right. gun, I've got a 1.10 Dawson front and a 125 rear. Okay. So I have a little. I have, have a little. Uh, I have yeah, more like a uh, quarter point of one zero. a side. What's that? 0.10 yeah. front, 125 rear. Yep. Hmm, simple math there says it's a 1.25. So what it is, is instead of, instead of being like half of a front sight width on either side, I've got more like a third or a quarter of a front sight yeah. width on either side. And um, so my ratio is a little bit different than Steve's. And, uh, it's because of your aging eyes. Yeah, well, that could be too. And <laughs> that's might, the, yeah. Well, and that's the other thing is, you know, I, I think it, it's kind of strange for one person to tell somebody else that it, this yeah, is the optimal right, setup. Right. It's not good um, for them, but not for everybody. You, I mean, even things like, oh, this would be a great segue. Like the color of the front dot. We've uh, talked about how we hate dots on rear sights, and we don't really like night sights all that much. But what we do like is a fiber optic front sight. And the fibers come in, at least as, as I'm aware, red, yellow, and green. Yeah, for the most part. And there are some uh, some people look at, you know, like the... Well, especially if they're colorblind. Yeah, that might right. Be one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you also look at, like, uh, you know, how the, actor, the eye reacts to colors. Right. And people say, well, you know, the eye, they, I mean, they're looking at a, like at a, a textbook, and it tells them mm-hmm. that the green one is better. And so they put a green one in their gun. But, you know, I feel like uh, I, I don't have any preference for any one color over another. I like to mix the colors up 
because the whole point of the dot is to draw your eye to it. And I find that if that dot is the same color every time I look at it, my eye gets just as bored with the red dot as it does with a plain black front sight. And um, one of the knocks, if you will, on the uh, fiber optic side is that the fiber can fall out. Yeah. And people act like it takes the whole front sight with it when it falls out. You know, like, oh, I don't want those fiber optic sights because that fiber might fall out at any moment. Well, what if it does? And you got a hole in your hole sight in your instead sight. of the yeah. red dot. Yeah. But if and when it falls out, if it gets so dirty, um, some uh, cleaning solvents will uh, dull the uh, light transmission abilities. Mm -hmm. You have to change it at a regular basis. It falls out, you lose it, it breaks, etc. Try just putting in a different color than you're used to. Yeah. And I find that that new color, I just kind of go, whoa, you know, it's like That's I, different I, looking. I fall in love all over again. Yeah. You know, it's, and, right. and so I, I don't think it's important that you stick to any one color, that your eye or your brain prefers one color. Uh, try them all and see which one you like. And then uh, after after a couple of months, try a different one, you know, and see how that works. So what you're coming to there is that typically red uh, red fiber optics will jump out better, or at least be more brilliant. But it takes more light, more ambient light, to light them up. Um, okay. So if you're out shooting in a nice, bright, sunny environment, Which unlike we really Seattle, do. you yeah. know, <laughs> like if you're down in Arizona or whatever, that red fiber optic front sight just really jumps out on on that on the front notch. Um, my my Glock carry gun has a green fiber optic front sight. It's not as bright, but in lower light environments, it tends to be more brilliant, say, than a red fiber optic, and with the, with a low amount of light. So that's the reason why I went with green on the on the Glock or my carry gun versus red uh, on my competition gun. But the advantage of fiber optics, you know, why fiber optic? Why go with that? It it's not. As a, as a means of sighting, making your sighting any better, but it really allows you to find the front sight faster than you would normally, say, if you were given using just plain black sights. Now, I know some people like plain black sights, and I know Caleb said he likes plain black sights. But he's um, not here. So and he's can... also a lot younger than we are, too, yeah. probably. So uh, once yeah. you reach a certain age, um, you're, you know, the, that having that fiber optic front sight really um, allows you to find it a lot faster. It makes for faster target acquisition. Um, and since everything is about speed, um, it, it really does work. Um, and but, I would never go back to anything other than fiber optic. But the dot does not replace the front sight nope. as your aiming reference. Nope. You're still using the top of the front sight and the top of the rear notch uh, to do your sighting. The fiber optics there just to find the front sight faster. And right. unfortunately, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to put the dot on top of the rear notch. Or in the middle. Or so, Yeah, to, right. I mean, the, the, you, the dot will not always be in the follow middle. Yeah. with sight alignment. You know, yeah. I mean, because if you draw, like on all of my guns, That's I would have to drop point. the dot considerably to put it in the middle of the rear notch. Because the dot is the up near the top of the front post. And so if you bring it down to the middle of the notch, the gun's going to shoot low. Now, it also depends on how large the front sight is That's and how true. large the, the dot, dot is. is. Yeah. There's a couple of different kind of industry standard fiber sizes. But if you've got a tall, in this case, you know, like a lot of 1911s will use a front sight of, let's say, 0.175 to 0.20. This in is height. a 40. 40 0.4. 0.04. And I think 0.6 is the other So the other here's size. a revolver with a pretty Massive. large. Yeah. I guess this is going to be 80 or so. 60. Yeah. All right. So that that you know that's interesting. That's only twenty thousands bigger, but boy, it looks like it's it looks three like times it's, as big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I could, I could tell you can see again. That. I mean, that's yeah. a, I don't know how well it picks it up on camera, but you can see how bright that front sight is. There, a thing really jumps out. Um, and of course, the longer the sight tube, the, the more light, the more light it'll transmit. Right. And so, um, you not only have the huge diameter, but it's about twice as long as the one on Steve's gun. Yeah. And I've also seen, I mean, I've seen other sites where uh, you, that you'll, you'll see a lot of uh, fiber optic front sites that look sort of like a bridge where the, the, the light uh, tube passes through multiple little right. posts and then there's open spaces in between. And I've seen guns where they'll polish the inside of those uh, cut out areas to help reflect more light into the right. tube because the light is transmitted from the outside diameter, the circumference of the tube and focused on the end. So it doesn't shine from one end through to the other end. It, gathers it absorbs from then, around right. the circumference and then focuses it at the end. So the less of the length of the, of the pipe, one of the manufacturers that calls it a light pipe, light pipe. Uh, the less of the, of the exterior of the tube that's covered, 
uh, the better the light's going to transmit for a given length. And so like on the Dawson site, you just have the very front end and the very rear end supported uh, or surrounded, and then the middle is supported over its full length. So it's, it's kind of buried down inside there, but still a large part of it is exposed to the light, so you get good light transmission. So this being my carry gun, it has a little bit smaller um, fiber optic element just from the standpoint of trying to protect the front sight, or at least the fiber optic a little bit more. If it was a really long piece in here like that revolver, you bash that thing, you're going to break your break the, the fiber optic. But again, like you are pointing out, so you lose it, so what? Front sight still works like a front sight. Get another one. hole in the middle of it. Yeah, get yeah. another one. I remember the first time I lost the, after I'd been using the fiber for a while, but the first time I lost it, and I brought the gun out up and noticed that the thing was gone, it's like I couldn't shoot. I was just like marveling at this <laughs> hole in the front sight. So it's not like you lose the capability of aiming your gun. You still have your front sight, and in fact, the little hole transmits a little bit of light. So you still have, you still have the same effect. And then when you're done with the stage, just go and put another piece in. So, yeah. In fact, we, uh, world. one of the matches that we shot uh, years ago was when we were working as staff. And I think there was three stages ago, my fiber optic broke and fell out. It was 100 degrees. I was really tired. I just didn't feel like it. I shot the rest of the match with a you know, hole in the front sight and called it good. So Yeah. It's not, a huge, it's not a huge deal. So we probably at this point should talk about how to use the front sights or how to use the sights. Let's just call it start out with that standpoint. 